which must call a chapter in a book The Excellence of Knowing Nothing. The Excellence of Knowing Nothing. Because <coughs> only in such a state is the peace uh, that that is there so so reassuring and so so totally um, content content enough to be still and I don't even know if that's you know the stillness is there contentment didn't bring stillness. We've been talking sometimes that the truth is simple and all of that, but sometimes I question this: whether we are looking in the wrong way to speak like that, that the truth is simple or complex. Maybe that is also a tribal perspective, because it is beyond simplicity or complexity. It's not about that. It's not in the category of the interrelated opposites. You understand? This is very important. I think what I'm saying right now. Because you know, sometimes I say, "But it's very simple. It's all very simple," and maybe according to how the mind works, it's I think in, Muji said simple. So that's to do with the way it works. But the truth does not work. It just is. And it's neither complex nor simple. You know, there's no way fitting into the way that the human mind uh, is working, which is. It's like the mind is like an instrument for for interpreting and for measuring change or variety and for speculative speculation. And what I'm speaking as as the awareness is not in any category. The mind itself is a, is a category. The mind itself is is uh, and the person who the sense of the person they're all linked together. And awareness is 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 not. It's not part of that atomic structure. It's not a structure. <clears throat> so, when you say simple, for the mind, it's um, always a signal to not doing anything. So, I think it's for me, it's helpful to not go this complicated thinking. Could you say again, say again? I missed it. Wait, when you say simple, the mind um, understands simple as I don't need to do anything. So, for me, I feel it's helpful if you. Make the, the distinction between complex and simple. The simple for, for my mind means I don't need to do anything, and it's what you want to find out. No? Yes, but you see, that is the beginning of the inquiry, because even to say that uh, my mind doesn't need to do anything and whatever, no. The inquiry is not really targeting your mind, but you. Who are you? Speakers say my mind even. See, when we speak about mind, immediately for me, the mind itself is a phenomenon. If I talk about my mind, immediately interest goes to the mind more than to the mind for me. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Many times you talk about people say, "Well, you know, my mind," and but it goes to the mind. Look for the mind, where the mind is going. But when you say my mind, my interest goes straight to the you. Who is the you? Because whatever the mind is, it's taking its reading from you. So who who are you? They say my mind immediately, you know, feels like I don't have to do anything. So who is the I? And because we are so unaccustomed to um, somehow question the I, we always more go to at least questioning what the I thinks, or the, what the I imagine, or what the I wants, which is secondary to the I. You see, this is the, these are the these are the real um, uh, essential. Que- I don't even know what uh, what this, all these people are talking about in this world. You know. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, Jesus is coming, and he's going to do all this kind of stuff. And I think, wow, you know, like I know this mind, you know, I know these worlds, I know these worlds. They they are part of they are part of a, a, an amazing sort of 
matrix of spirit of, of spiritual kind of like currents, you know. Because uh, the Muslims are having a relationship with God, and the Christians are having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and and you know, sort of like uh, you know, every you know, the Buddhists are having their relationship with the Buddha, and the Hindus are true, true, you know, you know, Krishna, and uh, the worshippers of Vishnu and the worshippers of uh, you know Shiva. They all have their, you know, the, these things which are real, and people are having experiences, uh, and sitting with Shiva and going through all these things, and uh, you know, meeting Jesus, and who is speaking about all these things, and where do these worlds collide? Where do they inter? Where do they meet as one? Because they seem to be more that even, you know, even the prophets seem to be arguing against other prophets in the mind of people, and it feels like you know it's unarguable. Where do you go? And I have to come back and say, but who are you? Jesus took me to see you being who? Who are you that Jesus recognized? In what way does Jesus recognize you? As what does Jesus recognize you? Can he recognize you anything other than the way he recognized himself? I mean, are you of different material? That he thinks himself, I'm the son of the father, but you are something else. You are going to hell. I mean, could Jesus, in what way Jesus is relating to you? In what way is the prophet uh, Muhammad, in what way is he relating to you? Or what does Krishna call you? You're calling you something. So this is the, this is the, oh my God. How to come out of this dream, the waking dream and the sleeping dream. Dream meaning the, the imagery of creation, the imagery of the vital force, the imagery of the existence in time, such as future and past and present, and identity. You know, there has to be, you see, the beyond whereby these things are seen, because where do you have to go to prove these things? Just today is good enough. Where was? Where is yesterday today? Where is yesterday today? And when the parents tomorrow come, where is this moment in that now? Where is the pictures of today, tomorrow? Where is yesterday's pictures in you today? Yesterday, Equally, a moment was there that was very, very succinct or very delicate or profound or very aggressive or something. It had an impact upon your being in some way. You know, where is it now? Where is it? Where is yesterday? At the time it says quarter to nine. Where was quarter to nine yesterday? We speak about the past. Where it come from? Where do you keep your past? Where is the past that we give so much importance and credibility to it? I think if a human being begins to question a little bit like this, a clarity must uh, prevail at the end of this inquiry. You know, I'm saying these things over and over again. I don't know if I'm just a, a failed missionary or something, because. I did not come from that background, particularly in its in its religious, you know, costume. I was not a I was not a thinker. I'm not a thinker. You know, I didn't grow up in a kind of like debates and thinking and introspecting and meditating. I was never doing that. I was more of a sports guy. I never read books and, you know. Very basic kind of guy. Watch movie, read comics, and you know, fool around. Make a lot of sports and all of that. And how radically that life changed, whereby uh, these things can be spoken about. And so, 
I mean, something happened here. I mean, you are going north and you end up in the east. Oh, what happened to you? I said, well, I, I don't know, actually. But something did to take place, something inside here, and a reorientation of direction somehow took place. Now. And I'm now speaking about these things. I'm not sitting here talking about martial arts or arts or any of the arts or, you know, any of this, any philosophy. And just somehow bringing awareness, bringing attention to this, which I've found of all the varying subjects in the human kingdom. And this is the, the ever prevailing one. What is your essential condition? Because everything got burnt by this fire. You know. And you have to be strong to be in this uh, when when I say I, I say you have to be strong to be in this world, what world am I talking about? The world that is lived in the mind, the world that is the world of human beings relating to other human beings, about life and ideology and their own personal mythology and identity, the interaction that happened in the marketplace called existence. This is what uh, I say is very complex. Because who sent us in particular here? You know, when your when our parents were 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 pregnant, mother pregnant with you. She was expecting a child, but was she expecting you particularly? And who are you particularly? You keep changing. Sometimes you're blue, sometimes green, sometimes yellow, sometimes no light, sometimes brown, sometimes pink. You know, who who are we? The child of our parents. We can't even stand still. We cannot be still. Something always cooking, it's always always moving. But there is that which which somehow looks upon that also, on the changeful aspect, the changefulness, and watch it from a place of unchangingness. Otherwise, the changeful could not be perceived as changeful, were it not for the unchanging. When one contemplates like this, all the subjects, all the differences, and so all of them, they vanish. Because they can't come here. There's a place where the world stops. Beyond that gate, it cannot come. There's a, a place where the person stops. Beyond this gate, it cannot come. And you are here. When I say we have to be strong for this world, mm. we are in our individual worlds, but we are in a common world in a way, because all the individualities, this is like I say, it's the same guy, it's the same world being looked at in a slightly different way in each one. But it's like when you are from uh, in the English speaking world, you can speak with everybody who speaks English, we can correspond. You know, we can correspond. And if we find an interpreter, we can correspond to people in different languages also. And you come to find that they are the same, the same guy. But you need a code to work with him. I don't know why these type of discussions produce so much joy.
Maybe that's what they are about. And where did joy come from? Uh, somehow the absence of the person. The real uh, observing into the truth removes the person. When the person is removed, there's pure joy. And where there's pure joy, this is you are in the presence of God, in the holiness itself. Because joy is God's perfume. Peace is God's perfume. Love is God's perfume. So when the person is out of the way, the smelly little person, eh, then you are in the perfume of the holiness. You see? You caught him. Yesterday and today, something feels a bit sh- shaken up, and and the inquiry. It's trying, like I'm trying to catch something, but it's like the moment it something is caught and really held on to, and it dissipates, and there's a peace. Um, it's like something escapes, and I cannot. <laughs> it feels very elusive, and it's it's like showing up in different ways, and. But for me, immediately, you see, immediately, you know, something escapes and is showing up in different elusive. I don't care nothing about it. What business I have with that? He wants to run about it. Let him run about the place. What does it take from me? What does it take from you? Nothing at all. What does it take from you? Attention and eventually belief again, somehow. But how can it take that? It cannot take that. It can. It can. It can appeal for that. Cannot take it. It is you who give attention to it, or something. Just out of habit. You have to acknowledge your power. You cannot just keep giving things away and say, "Oh, because this thing here arises means that I'm I'm distracted." No, you're not uh, be- because of that. Why do you refuse your power to acknowledge yourself? You give acknowledgement to everything else, something out external. Look at this thing. Oh, this thing is going now. Why does this thing go, Muji? Why does this thing go now? I say, what thing? That thing, Muji. I am not here to look about. What about you? I want to see you. You want to show me this thing. I want to show you that thing. Here about that thing and this thing. There's so many things in the world. We have to look in that that thing. But you, I want to meet. Because the God has showed itself in this body. Huh? Then something seems to be obstructing the God. So why how can anything obstruct the God? Then I see that the powers are misused to give attention to things which are really um, of little value in themselves. They only have the value given to them. Can a thing have value in itself? Does gold have value in itself? There was no human being. Would gold be valuable? Huh? Would gold be arguing? You know, I'm I'm twenty two carat gold. You're only eighteen carat. Ha 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 ha! I'm above gold. And no, for whom? It's you who give the value to it. Whatever you value, whatever you want, you give value to it. Early explorers used to go to some country, find that they have gold. Yeah, and exchange gold for what? Lots of little other little nonsense things. Hmm? I give you a mirror. Look, you can see your face. Ah! Oh, I take your gold. Yeah, yeah, take it, take it. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> look at them. Look at them. Oh my God! You know, he's giving me something mystical. What a stupid man! He took all my gold and gave me this. Amazing. Wow, I wonder if there's some place you can get more of this from, and then more of them are coming. Ah, look, mirrors! Oh, gold! Take all the gold! Well, why? You value this thing; they value that thing. Eh? Does the thing have value in itself? No, the value is in you.
If you really understood this, all your questions and doubts would perish, mm. isn't it? Why would you be coming asking? Well, sometimes my mind. Well, you would even, you would not have it's finished. It's finished. If you found what doesn't even take one, not one minute, not even one second, it doesn't take one second even. I have not heard anybody talking about it. It's just that there seems to be a lingering confusion that somehow. It's Suppose you don't have time to be confused. What doesn't take time? There's no time to be confused. Huh? Why you bother answer? You see, maybe you are just getting a little bit acquainted with me. Maybe we're on different time frame. Because I am only here now. You understand? Hmm? I can't answer for later on. The closest people to me, you know, sometimes they still ask me, you, you, what about tomorrow? What do you want to do today, later on? Or what do you want to do? I said, but you're with me all the time and you still don't know. I don't know nothing about these things. I know nothing about tomorrow. I've never seen tomorrow. I don't know it. <clears throat> so I am more want to know where is the top of the game right now? I don't know about it tomorrow. Tomorrow don't exist for me. If it exists, it has to be here now. You follow? Are you on my wavelength a little bit? Eh? Because the rest is just excuse for me. It's just excuse because you're not really you're not up for just being what is. We're only always on the way to what is. You're never enough enough just what is. So this is why you need time. So time give you this. You want something from time? Take some of that. But what doesn't take time? You say, but there's something that creates confusion. I ain't got time to be confused. <clears throat> I don't have time to be confused. Conf to be confused, you need some time. And you need something. I don't have nothing. And don't listen to me like I'm speaking some kind of little game or some riddle or some kind of novelty. I'm speaking to you as honestly as words can express that my truth. <clears throat> so therefore, I've got to wait for you. Why have I got to wait for you? All of you tell me, I've got to wait for you. Why can't we be in real time together or in no time together? I, I, I feel very much. You see, one that maybe we might we might arrive to, we might we might arrive together. We might just be here together. Can we be here together? Our bodies is in the same time together, but are we in the same time together or timelessness? I have to wait for everybody. Only when you're empty, I don't have to wait for you. You follow or not? So it's a clue how you are being in your own life. You're waiting for something. And if you're waiting for something, you're not present. Now the thing you're waiting for, is it waiting for you? You want to do something about something. I don't have to do anything about anything. And what I say, <clears throat> let's meet. Let's meet. But do we need an appointment? Appointment means not now. You follow. Let's meet. Huh? You say when? I say, uh, now. Now doesn't need any appointment. Appointment means later. Your whole life is later. Waiting for something to happen. 
what you're waiting to happen itself cannot happen. You're waiting for what cannot happen to happen. <coughs> so when will that happen? This is going to be one of my best YouTubes. Isn't it? For the one who has the eyes to see it, the mind to see it. Hmm? Even if you try to focus, you're already late. Even if you try to focus on what I'm saying, to try and understand, you are already late. Because your very attempt already is seen in that which is timeless. And that one which sees your attempt is not interested in your attempt or even you. And now, are these words offensive, is it? Somebody would be offended by them. Because the mind wants to do. So what do I do? I said, but doing takes time, baby. What doesn't take time? What, what is it that you don't have to do, nor can you undo? In England, the English man is saying, how do you do? I don't do. <laughs> so instantly more instant than instant is what come on more instant than instant no time for a relationship no time to separate no time to meet no time to meet then what now what you have to reject me or accept me accept. it's already done you see that cannot even accept or reject me isn't it I'm trying to show you where we've never separated Are you up to speed? Hmm? Because when I speak like this, then you start to see, my God, I'm so slow. I'm so slow. Because everything about me take time. Everything about me take time. To meet God, that's going to take even more time. My God, I don't need a lot of time. People tell you, I need more time. I need more time. What doesn't take time? <clears throat> Time is in the domain of ignorance. And don't try and do anything because that's wrong already. What you're trying to do, take time. What does not take time? There's already a very strong reflex that maybe as soon as you think this conversation is over, which makes no makes no difference to what is, eh? it wants to slip back into yeah, well, you know, okay, I can breathe again, like, because I'm back into ignorance. <coughs> you gotta go back to time because what we are used to is time. Yeah, we're comfortable. Yeah, what time you want to go tomorrow, Muji? At 7 o'clock, okay, I'll be there 10 to 7. That's our life. Miss 10 to 7. But what doesn't take time? 
be in that as that which does not take time. Now, what are you going to do with my words when I say that? Who receives the words? Who responds to them? They are only reflecting back something which is not time. It is opening up something to show you what is not time. But this thing is not apart from you. <clears throat> this is the mystery. In any circle you sit now in the universe, in the world, people discussing, beings discussing these things. This this what I'm speaking now. This is what you have to hear. I'm telling you. You I wonder if you have a sense or not about it. Yes. That which does not take time. The others, we want to do this, and we have got to do this, and try to get into this, and to try and explore what is inside the atom. You, <laughs> bye. <laughs> you are time investors. Time share. No, no, no. What does not take time? This is the good news, I tell you. This is the good news. Set your heart free. Set your heart free. Take you out of this this <clears throat> room of suffering and projection, and fantasy and delusion. That does not take time. When you find that out, you are in love already. It does not need time to love. Love knows nothing about time. Peace. Peace knows nothing about time. Joy. Joy knows nothing about time. Wisdom. Nothing about time. The Divine. Nothing about time. Timeless, eternal, they say. But who is going to who is going to collapse in what I'm speaking? Something in you understand immediately, you see. When I speak to you, something in you already understands immediately. It doesn't have to do anything at all, isn't it? Something immediately knows what I'm speaking. You know? And as joy in itself. It may say for hundreds of years I'm trying to release this to myself. But today is enough grace is here to say and hear myself at the same time. To speak and hear myself instantly, no delay, no time. Once you have heard it in your heart, you cannot be fooled by time. You cannot be fooled by time. This is why every time I hear people talking, yeah, would you the trouble if you already in this time, darling? I don't have time for you. I'm here for a little time with you. To introduce you to the timeless. One day uh, I'll go. I don't know when that one day, it could be one day in timelessness I'll go. I'll leave time. While we have a little time, don't waste it. Use it to find the timeless.
You see, this you have put down as the most important talk a human being can have. But only if it is understood. Only if it is understood. And if it is grasped inside the heart, is the most profound thing you will hear in the human kingdom. Who knows this, what I am speaking in the heart? Very good. It has so many reflections in the body. Huh? It has so many reflections in the body. Yes. It is going to have a lot of impact and effects. Because when it is understood, the truth is blessing every facet of the expression in the manifest world, the impact of it. Because I see the rest, once you have seen like this, the rest is a trick, is a trick of the mind. If you make your stance in the mind, you have to play by the rules of the mind. And the rule of the mind is time and effort and identity. And then you are go around on that merry go round for I don't know, it's not so merry actually. You go around for quite uh, a little while. Because it is creating time, produce time, selling time, selling effort, selling be- belief. Selling, selling concepts, selling duality, selling distance, selling separation, selling promises, trying to sell God, selling truth. But I point you directly that which is not in the bubble of that delusion, So what should we do now has got nothing to do with it. It is not a doing thing. Now do you hear this thing in your head, in your heart, in, in or in everything, in everything that you can say is you? Which part does that go to? Everywhere. Everywhere, thank you. Everywhere. We've been talking about something, and sometimes I, I discuss it a little bit with Arjuna. We've been using sometimes some womb, some timber that we buy, and they say that uh, you know we call it talonized wood. I first learned about this term in England. Talonized wood. And this is a wood. It looks like any other wood. You buy it like this, but you put it in the ground. It doesn't rot. But no insect can live in it. Okay. It just does not rot like that. Okay? They say. I say, how is it possible? Because I put a regular piece of wood and a talonized wood together, and then this one, after you put it in the ground, after one year and stuff like that, you can just take it and break it with your hand. But this one, it's the same. Then I heard about the process. I don't know if it is true. Maybe somebody here who is more technically. Uh, um, uh, aware of this than I am. But they say they put the wood, the, the, the regular wood, in a chamber, like in a, in, a, in a big kind of tube. And then this tube, they create kind of like, they suck all the air out. They draw out, like they suck all the air out. So whatever moisture was inside the wood, when they turn up this thing, goes suck everything out. No? So now inside is a tremendous tension inside this vacuum. And then at the other end, they release this, this liquid. And when they release it, it, it replaces what the other one came out, something like this. Yeah? And that just gets pulled back with this particular chemical treatment that makes the wood, uh, you know, gives it that, that longevity. And all those years ago, it struck something in my mind. Yeah, I was praying to God, talonize me. <laughs> you understand? You understand this prayer? Yes. Yeah, talonize me. 
put me in your vacuum. Suck out all my <laughs> bullshit. Okay? And release you. <laughs> Colonize me. Many, many years ago. Such was the impact. How long it takes. To be talonized, it's also a phenomenon. Hmm? Because the truth doesn't need to talonize anything. You understand? It is. Talonizing takes some time. Even a second, a microsecond, it's finished. Truth doesn't take that. Why? Because it is everywhere the same already. This is where I tell you, when my master spoke, instant awakening. Hmm? Then I am telling you, even not even instant. What does not take time? So you may say, understanding somehow maybe take time. A little time, instant, to recognize the timeless, <laughs> isn't it? Instant to recognize the timeless. Like that. Then where does it fit in? The progress and the hardship and the suffering. And please help me. Oh, and this thing. Does that have a place? You see? I say, yeah, it has a place. It is also the play of the dynamic consciousness which manifests as time also. And change and identity, because it needs an identity. Only the identity can evolve in time. Without without an, an entity can there be evolution. There must be some form, then you can have the evolution. Then this is the form. And the form, you might say, is evolving through the natural biological process of growth and decay. Hmm? The mind is evolving, also evolutionary, through intelligence and experience and learning and so on. But the inmost one, does it evolve? Is it? The ever perfect. But how do you know there's an ever perfect? Maybe that's just a concept also. How can you prove it's ever perfect? Okay, forget ever perfect. Let's just say everything you see is imperfect. What gives you the ability to know that it's imperfect because it is subject to change? If everything is subject to change, you would not even have the concept of change. Isn't it? You can only perceive that which is changeful, because there is that which is unchanging. But the unchanging you cannot see. You can only know it by knowing that which is changeful. When you know what is changeful, immediately what is unchanging is there. Maybe it is enough for today tell you that. More than this you don't need to hear about now. Hmm? Thank you, thank Too much love, eh? too much love, too much peace, too much space, too much joy, too much light, too much holiness, too much perfection, too much God, too much, too much, too much. This is what I have to say.
if you ask me, what is my perceiving? Eh, too much. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much true. Too much. Too much happiness. Too much contentment. Too much light. Too much peace. Too much joy. Too much timelessness. We can feel it. <laughs> and uh, and it is it is infecting you to remove you and leave only the timelessness. Leave a little bit you. Why not enjoy a bit of you? Add a bit of you too. <laughs> Why not have a little bit? No harm. <coughs> You without you, and you with you. Before I was saying you without you, first come to you without you, and then you can have the you back. <laughs> Give him a ride. You without you, and you with you, if you want. No harm done. There's too much. Too much happiness. <laughs> you ever hear anybody say like that? Too much happiness, too much joy, too much love. Huh? Yes. Yes? Who? <laughs> Come the whole world. Come whole world can drink as much joy, as much happiness as it wants. But it only has to be a bit empty first, because you cannot fill a full cup. Full of joy. Today, when I read this letter from this person who was writing about somebody writing about, oh, you know, they must have seen our YouTubes or something, and felt very struck and wanted to tell, oh, send all these all these biblical messages that they found in the Revelations and. And 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 the, the, some of the gospels and so on, to condemnation messages, you know, of going to hell, you're going to go to hell, and all of these things. And I said, and sometimes I feel a pain inside my heart. And I said, okay, all right. Then, if I can be wrong about this, if I'm wrong about this, and. Then I'm also guiding others into this wrongfulness. And then put a stop to it and, and turn everybody to the right way. If I'm wrong about it, then I have to put it like this: I'm wrong about it. And I'm here telling you: too much joy, too much peace, <laughs> too much love, too much happiness, too much freedom. Too much compassion, too much all-inclusiveness, too much life, too much timelessness, too much infiniteness, too much, too much. Because what can I do but say this thing? I can't say nothing else. I don't know how to say something else. Okay, say anything else. Why huh? should I can say sometimes why not? Why don't try? Sometimes I try and talk about something else, but all my something else is the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's not the something else. There's no. There's nothing else. There's no else. Then somehow, when I'm here with the, in the company of, uh, of your company in Sangha. And then it, it, it loves it to be there. It, it loves its own Sangha. When it finds those that 
venerated that has a love for the truth, for the supreme. You see, and then it 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 knows no bound but to show our love upon them, because it has a perfect excuse to do it. <laughs> I don't know. And they come in all forms, all forms they come. I see the love of God, the power of the Holy Spirit and thing working in many different expressions, it's there. Yeah. But it imparts its grace in many different ways, you know, in the form of miracles and uh, many ways. And they are good, all is good. But this way is very beautiful. The all encompassing way. The part of emptiness. Not somethingness. Because wherever there's something there's gonna be competition, there's gonna be comparisons, there's gonna be Preferences, there are going to be rejections, there's going to be war, there's going to be conflict. But when there is that holy emptiness, then the fullness can, the real fullness can show itself because it will not be stained uh, by the delusions of the ego. It cannot do it. I feel to say like that. And you are so filled with joy, you see, you don't even want to go to bed, you can't sleep, even your body is tired, don't know what it means, but body is tired, no, I'm tired. I don't know when this body will expire, but sometimes I feel that some more time and it would be appreciated to prolong this joy in the sharing of this of this pointing. But uh, it's not up to a me in that way. I can say like that.
And you know that all of this is just a play, don't you? Yeah? It has to be a play. Every day fresh, who writes this play? Huh? This play, the infinite one. Every day this play is going on. And every character has a role in it. Even the viruses have a role to play. Even the worms, if you go to the belly of the earth, you find creatures there. Every one of them are playing their role perfectly. Everyone, even the dung beetle. Eat the tapeworm. The flea, everything. Everybody has a role they're playing in this great play. The great play of consciousness, the great dream of consciousness. No rehearsal. Take one. Take one. Give one. Take one. And because there's no rehearsal, you can just relax. Because everything you do is in the play already. (laughs) <laughs> you like it? It's very nice. Huh? You can't do anything wrong. Even your mind is in the play. Yes, even your mind is in the play. The only thing is, you must know that. There is something that's not in the play. But even your mind is in the play. So you can just relax, let him go. Only thing, don't identify with him. Remember, you are just the ultimate witness of it. Who is on the balcony watching all this? The Supreme Lord of the Universe. And you. He knows what I'm talking. <clears throat> you are do. But now it's been made very clear. Both your body and your mind and your emotions, all of it is already a part of the play, the great play. Just don't be confused that it is you. You are the witness. You get the feeling, even the feeling that it is you is part of the play. <laughs>